Well, it's a very good morning from him, and it's a very good morning from me. I hope everybody's well. Let's, uh, let's pop in and say hello, shall we? And uh, come on into our mortgage live stream. Of course, mortgages evolving, aren't they? Protection advice evolving. Maybe next year I might be saying our financial advisor live stream because there's an awful lot of uh, mortgage advisors, brokers, segueing over to you know MOTs with product transfers and looking at protection needs of clients, starting to look at financial advice, financial advising. There's quite a lot of people wanting to uh, to head into that realm. So we might just see that happening in the next year. I do foresee it, by the way, writing a couple of articles this week about this perfect storm that's going on at the moment with, with our trade and how it's all changing and how we're evolving. So, yeah, let's just let's talk about that another time. Shall we? Anyway, enough of that. Hope all is good with you. I hope, um, hope you had a brilliant weekend because um, the weather was, was spectacular, wasn't it? And it still is out there, actually, if you're lucky enough to be outside or on a patio or something doing your work but uh, really really good weekend weather and uh, well we're into June aren't we next week so half term here bank holiday last one I think for a while so let's look forward to that shall we what have we got planned for you today well I want to take a look at um, national insurance for you I'll give you a big old update on that there's been a few little tweaks and changes and we really ought to know about these things not because we we get involved in national insurance but it affects a lot of the advice we give. So we do need to know about how it all works, really. particularly if you're in the protection field, which, of course, if you're not, you're probably not making a good living this year. So let's, let's, let's talk about that another time. Anyway, lots of things going on at the weekend, lots of reading and stuff. Something tickled me. I just wanted to share it with you. And it's, um, I'll, I'll show you the slide of this one. because It's just quite funny, really. This is um, from, from the Money Week or the Week magazine I was reading. This is the bottom paragraph I want to refer you to down here. Um, does anybody read the privacy policies that organisations are obliged to publish? Um, think Tank here, Tax Policy Associates, suspected not. So he inserted into his website a clause reading, we will send a bottle of good wine to the first person who, to read this. And last week he revealed it had taken three months for the bottle of wine to be claimed. And I thought that was brilliant. How many of you read terms and conditions and privacy notices and things on websites? I doubt very many of us do. And of course, how many clients read suitability letters, suitability reports, all this paperwork we send them in triplicate for every product and service we get involved in? I doubt very many, actually, if truth be told. Which is why trust and ethics and, and the right advice and consumer duty is so important in our trade. Because people do trust you to do a great job. But we know that, don't we? <laughs> that was just funny. The other one I heard a couple of years ago was um, what one website put onto its privacy thing, some of the terms and conditions. You know, if, if you, if you uh, click against this, we will we will retain your soul forever. <laughs> Apparently they kept the soul of all their people. Anyway, love that. Let's get over and take a look at um, our main topic today, which is national insurance. Now, national insurance has been around since, well, actually, if you're interested, 1911. But it was only um, formalised properly in 1948 by the Labour government when they came in after the Second World War, when they in, in, you know, enhanced the NHS and the welfare state. So national insurance has always been around, but there's been a few changes. And just to share these changes with you, the BBC website here for you, national insurance calculator, how much will the two pence cut save me and what is income tax? National insurance has been in the press last autumn and this March because our Chancellor, current Chancellor of course, has reduced the national insurance rate by 4p, I think it is in total, 2p last autumn and 2p this spring. But um, apart from having a look at your pay packet and seeing what's in there and if you see a few extra pounds in there, not a lot of people really understand and know how it works. And he's trying to eradicate it completely, fair enough. Because as far as he's concerned and others, it's just a tax. That's all it is. It's a taxation. However, it does entitle you to certain benefits. So if you pay national insurance, and it's important to do so, and that's the point I want to make in this, this section, really. If you pay national insurance, it does entitle you to certain state benefits that you wouldn't have got unless you paid it. So let me share with you those state benefits I have in mind for you. Here we are. This little slide gives you an indication of the, the benefits. And there's six main ones. Basic state pension, of course, the new state pension. The job seekers, for people looking for a job because they're unemployed. The employment and support allowance, which is people who are ill, pretty much, really. Maternity allowance and the bereavement support payment. Now, these benefits are actually pretty good. If you don't qualify for these benefits, 
as you can see, yes, 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 yes to the national insurance. You need to pay national insurance to get them. If you don't qualify for these benefits, then you will get universal credit and some other kind of help from the government. But that's all very heavily means tested. These are automatically given to you by the right of having a national insurance record. So obviously estate pensions, the big one. That's one that costs the government the most money. But the bereavement support allowance down there, uh, bereavement support payment is, is an incredibly generous thing really at the end of the day and the employment and support allowance for people who can't work due to illness is massive at the moment a lot of people are claiming that benefit and right if you said because they're ill so national insurance therefore does have a purpose it's not a tax really it is but it's not a tax you have to get a record of national insurance now, national insurance becomes payable at age 16, <laughs> which is brilliant, isn't it? I remember paying national insurance when I was a, a student doing summer work. And it's paid all the way up to 67, which is the current state retirement age. Of course, it's, it's changing at some point, isn't it? So you have to pay national insurance for quite a few working years of your life. Obviously, old age people, people who are taking their pension 67 plus, don't have to pay national insurance. That may change with the new government, but we'll wait and see. Now the different rates of um, national insurance vary according to your, your employment situation. So what I'm going to do now is head over to the whiteboard and summarise those for you because these are things you do need to know for the exam as well. So let's just pop across to, to the whiteboard. Now with national insurance you, uh, you pay the NI according to the situation you're in, employed, self-employed, your employer of course pays and not working they pay a certain amount of national insurance as well. So what I'd like to do is take a look at what each person pays, some, some detail for you. So let's start then with employed people. Now employed people pay national insurance between the ages of 16 and 67, as we said to you, because that's just the way it goes, I'm afraid. They pay under class one, yeah. They pay class one national insurance. That's just the category of it as well. Now the rates are changing all the time. 8% and 2% is what they pay. They pay 8% over a certain figure the uh, personal allowance, which is 12,570. And then above another figure, they pay it 2%. So it's not like income tax, which gets it more expensive. National insurance effectively goes down, doesn't it? Now they pay under the PAYE system, as you can see. So they pay each month with their salary and all works particularly well. So that's pretty much employed people. It's not difficult for them to figure it out. And most people who pay national insurance would have benefited from the reduction of the 2% last year and 2% this year, but they'd have had more money in their pay packet. That's pretty much how it works for employed people. Now for your employer, they have to pay on your behalf and they pay a class, let's get this right out, class 1A and 1B. It's just the category of, of national insurance that they pay and they pay at different figures and different rates, but they pay quite a bit of national insurance actually on your behalf. Now, of course, each year you pay your national insurance, you get a credit for that year. And that, of course, helps towards the state benefits that you're going to be getting. Now, self-employed, they work in a different way. There's broadly three now. It's a bit complicated now to change, change the rules a bit, really. Now, up to um, a certain figure, they pay naught. So let's just put that for you. Up to net profits of six, seven, here, let's just put it in there for you, six, seven, two, five. So the net profits, they pay at 0%. So they don't pay national insurance if their net profits are very low, but they can voluntarily play, pay class three. And I'll come on to that in a second. They can volunteer to pay class three. Now, why would they do that? Well, if they don't pay national insurance, they don't get a credit for that year for national insurance. So they don't benefit from the state pension and that sort of thing. The state pension, you need 35 years of service or of paying national insurance to get your full state pension. So it's worth doing. But these people, of course, are not earning a huge amount of money, aren't they? Now, between that and that um, personal allowance figure, 12,570, there you go. Let's put the figure in there. They pay, but they don't. Um, they, 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 they actually pay 0%. The government, the government pay class 2 on your behalf and that just keeps your record for national insurance now they abolished it effectively what used to happen is that the self-employed would pay two or three pounds a week as class two national insurance 
and that was on going on for years and then they abolished it and then they bought it back again and then they abolished it again it's been in like a yo-yo but it's finally gone now but the, the government kind of give you a credit for class two just to keep your record up to speed now beyond 570 in profits that's when you start paying class four yeah so we've got all the classes up now haven't we and the, the figures there, not important, the figures, because you can see those. So currently 6% and 2%, slightly less than employed people, but let's not worry too much about that. So, you know, that's how the self-employed do it. Again, you won't need to worry about calculating this sort of thing. You just need to know that the self-employed person's paid their stamp, if you like. They've got their credit for the year. So people not working then, let's have a quick look at what happens here. This is quite important, actually. Um, you can, as I said to you, pay class three. So if you're not working for, for any reason, you can pay class three national insurance to catch up for those lost years. Um, because state pension, for example, you need 35 years, don't you? So there is a voluntary class that you can start paying when you start working again, you can start paying class three voluntary contributions to pick up your, your record. And that's worth thinking about because things like the state pension, of course, are guaranteed and you've got triple locks and all sorts of things, isn't it? Now, the, the other thing to think about down here is you can get credits for national insurance for various state benefits that you're receiving. And there's two important ones here. This is for, for you to think about. And what I'm saying here is if you're not working and you're claiming some state benefits, the state will give you a credit for national insurance for that year, which is like worth a lot of money. A bit like paying the, the state paying your class three for you. And there's two important ones here that affect us as financial advisors. The first one is the carer's allowance. Now, the carer's allowance is given to somebody who's caring for somebody that needs caring. And it's for people of uh, working age. And the whole point about the carer's allowance, it gives you a few pounds each week. Of course it does. But it also gives you a credit for national insurance. So if you've got somebody in their 30s looking after an elderly mother, for example, the person in their 30s, she will get a credit for national insurance and she'll get a few pounds as well. The other one is child benefit. Now this one's been in the news a lot, isn't it really? Child benefit because they're trying to tweak the, the means testing on that one. Now child benefit, as you know, gets, you have to repay it when your salary, one person's salary is over a certain figure. And it's fair or unfair, you know, people talk about that a lot, but even if you didn't want it, you should claim it and then opt not to receive it. Sounds a bit daft, doesn't it? So claim child benefit, but say, look, I don't actually want it because you can have to pay it back anyway, maybe because your, your partner earns more than you know, a certain amount of money. But by claiming child benefit, you get, the person claiming it gets the credit for national insurance. And that's important to think about. Do you give advice on this stuff? Not really. If you're in the later life lending market, you might get involved in that. If you're talking about protection for a family, you'll probably talk about child benefit a, a little bit as well. So that's the basics then of national insurance. Don't worry about the numbers and stuff. You know, you know, you need to remember those things. Just, just the employee people pay, pay class one. Self-employed only pay class four now. Um, if you're uh, not working, you could pay class three voluntary contributions as well. Class two's gone now, but the government pay that at the moment. Well, kind of pay it in a way. You don't pay it, do they? They just give person a credit for their national insurance record. So that's a good update for you on the numbers. Let's just finish off the topic then, shall we? Pop across here. Will it stay or will it go? The Clash, of course, introduced that tune in uh, 1982. Great tune that was. London band, The Clash. Will it stay or will it go? Or should I stay or should I go? And those things. But the point is, though, will national insurance stay or will it go? If we have a Conservative government for another term, which I doubt we will, I think... Jeremy Hunt will get rid of it. Will Rachel do the same thing? I don't know. It depends on what her plans are. But who then funds national insurance-based welfare benefits? It'll just be come under the general tax situation, won't it? Who will fund the NHS? Well, I think the NHS is funded by basic tax anyway. So I think they're just trying to simplify things. And arguably, national insurance is quite complicated, isn't it? Now, what, what's the action for you as a, as a financial advisor, mortgage advisor, protection advisor? Well, you won't get into topics around national insurance, but there's a couple of things you can do. If you're talking about pensions, giving pensions advice, then you'll need to know what state pension they're going to get. And there's an online form called a BR19, which you can complete online. And what that does is it gives you a, a forecast of what state pension you're entitled to at, at certain ages. You should do that for your clients because they now, then know how much state pension they're going to get. 
So I think that's definitely something to think about. And if you're an advisor authorised in that area, you'll want to top that up with some kind of SIP or personal pension. So that's the first thing to do, see, see what state pension they're entitled to. Now the other thing is, you know, when you're talking about um, state benefits, we on that um, slide over here, for example, we talked about, um, as you can see here, employment support allowance, uh, job seekers allowance, maternity bereavement support payment. Now these are state benefits and they give a certain amount of money, but if somebody is concerned about um, illness and dying and they have a family to look after, debts to repay, then they'll look for some extra protection, won't they? They'll look for some life assurance or income protection or critical illness from you. So when you talk about protection, there is a state state benefit foundation there, and I'd bring the topic up, otherwise the client will only object later anyway. Well, the state will pay me, you know. There is a, a basic amount of money they're going to get, so find out what, what, you know, how they pay the national insurance, what they're entitled to, and make them aware that they might, they might get £100 a week or something. And then you need to build in on top of that private provision with income protection, insurance, life insurance, that sort of thing. So that's something to think about as well as a financial advisor. Bring the topic up, otherwise it will come back to bite you on the bottom, as these things always do. So that's national insurance. An update for you. Hope you've enjoyed that. Bye. <laughs> Good. OK, well done. So a bit of an update there for you on national insurance. Hope that's been useful for you. Again, we're updating all our materials at the moment. Written readiness for the new syllabus is coming in in August, September. We're doing some new videos. We're having a look at existing ones. Many of them are completely evergreen anyway. Not a lot's changing in this syllabus change, really. I won't worry about too much about the changes. So we're, we're amending things, adjusting things, improving things, bringing in some new products for the autumn because um, you know the market's going to pick up. We're swinging back round. The economy's booming again. Well, not booming, but it's, it's swinging back round. The market's looking good if you've been reading the press. Uh, the mini recession we had last autumn is pretty gone now. We're, we've got GDP growing. Inflation's coming right down, which is, which is fantastic. Mainly because of a year ago, gas prices went up and now they've come right down, haven't they? And oil prices, petrol prices are bubbling a little bit, aren't they? Food prices a year ago shot up. Now, of course, they're coming down. So inflation itself, the headline inflation is quite low. Will the Bank of England reduce interest rates? We don't know yet. Next month, June, they might do. Probably by a quarter. If they don't, they'll do it in September because that's something they'll do. And that'll start picking things up. And of course, we've got the election coming along. And then next year, springtime, we could see things really bouncing. So get yourself prepared for that. Get yourself, get your infrastructure together. Get those exams out the way you need to get to, because it will get busy again. And you won't even notice it. Suddenly, it'll get busy. It always works. Every downturn, we always have an upturn. We've had that for years. So get yourself prepared for that one. And we'll help you as much as possible. As always, if you want to get onto our database there, we've been sending out some special offers this week to people on our database, some, uh, some offers and things, and some new products and ideas that we got uh, planned for you. So that's all working really well. So that's all for you to enjoy as well. Other than that, I'm going to wish you a fantastic um, few days in the sunshine, whatever is your cup of tea this week. Maybe you're off next week with the half term. Kids are all off, aren't they, enjoying the sunshine. We'll see you all next week. 